The Iberian pig is a unique breed with an extraordinary metabolism. It flourishes in the Dehesa, an ecological paradise of pastureland studied with cork oak trees whose acorns, bellotas in Spanish, provide rich feed for the pigs. The local fincas keep alive a tradition and know-how handed down from one generation to the next to produce more succulent hams. Ham salt and thyme. Bellota Bellota selects only the finest ham from 100% Iberian pigs fattened on acorns. Iberico ham is unquestionably one of the world's finest gastronomic treasures. All our hams carry a total traceability document guaranteeing their quality and authenticity. Percentage of Iberian breed, Finca of origin, Oleic acid content, a pig is graded Bellota quality only if its fat contains minimum 55% of oleic acid. Numbers of day of Montanera, quantity of acorns eaten, curing time, and finally, the designation of origin. The designation of origin is to Spain what the AOC is to France. In the case of Iberian ham, Spain has four DOs. Guijuelo de Salamanca, feminine, milled. Desa Extremadura, complex, rich. Huelva Jabugo, strong, generous. Los Pedroches, flavorful, fine. The Maya is designed to protect your ham during transport. It is important to remove the ham from its protective layers as soon as possible. And if you're not planning on carving it immediately, to hang it in a cool, dry place. The stand is essential on two counts, for the safety of the master slicer and for the quality of the carving. The ham stand consists of a base to which is fixed an upright that holds the ham in place, clamping it just above the hoof. A stand equipped with a 360 degrees rotating system is recommended. The toolkit consists in a set of three knives. A chef's knife to cut into and trim the ham. A burning knife, fairly sharp and always with a pointed tip. A ham knife. This is the knife you will use through the slicing process. You can also use pincers to lift the slices from your ham. You'll also need a chainmail glove to protect your free hand when you'll need force and precision. And a honing steel. Le fusil est composé d'une mèche finement rainurée et euh, va servir à redresser le fil. Le fil de couteau, c'est la partie extrême du tranchant. C'est quelque chose de très fragile et quand on l'utilise de temps en temps, il faut repasser au fusil pour redresser ce fil, pour garder la qualité de coupe du couteau. On prend le fusil perpendiculaire à soi, le couteau dans sa main droite si on est droitier, et je pose le talon sur le fusil à peu près de 30 degrés et je fais ce geste. Ce n'est pas le poignet qui tourne, c'est l'ensemble de l'avant-bras la, de qui tourne autour du coude. Et on le fait alternativement d'un côté et de l'autre. Au bout de trois fois ou quatre fois, on arrête et on doit constater que le tranchant est revenu. You're now ready to begin the slicing. Be sure you wear appropriate clothing, better with long sleeves. Place your ham holder firmly on a stable surface at a convenient height. If you drop a knife, never attempt to catch it. Before you begin slicing, you need to acknowledge the morphology of your ham. This is the tibia and the fibula extending from the femur and the pelvic bone. These bones mark out the five main areas of your ham. The hock, the massa, the center, the papilla, and the punta. Position the ham in front of you, then insert the narrow hand hoof upwards in the clamp. 
insert the hoof hand as far as possible into the clamp, then tighten the screw down to hold it firmly in place. Start with your biggest knife and make sure to wear a chain mail glove on your free hand. Measure the width of two fingers down from the clamp holding the hoof to determine where to make your first cut. Cut into the ham at the position you've marked. Use your stronger hand to force down on the knife handle and make sure to cut as deep as possible. Once the blade is deeply embedded, continue cutting all around one side and on the other side for a perfect vertical notch. Cut away the first slice of rind and fat in a slow but sure movement, all the way to the notch. Now, cut away the rind on the sides of your ham by about 15 cm to begin with. Start with the left side, then the right, and finally the end nearest you. Always cut away from you. Remove any yellow fat to leave only white fat. You can keep back the strips of fat you cut off, as these can be used to protect the exposed meat if you want to interrupt the slicing. We begin by slicing the massa. Use your ham knife to cut short slices rather than full ones. A straight cut is very important, handling the knife slightly to cut fine to medium slices. Always keeping the cut flat. The movement is similar to the bowing action of a violinist. Extremely tender thanks to lengthy curing. Impressively rich in both intensity and complexity of flavor. When you come to the pelvic bone, you'll need to cut around it. Use the boning knife and remove the flesh from the bone with the tip of the knife. If you want to interrupt your slicing, cover the flesh with the strips of fat trimmed off at the start. Follow the natural incline of the flesh and carve down at the same pace as the massa. Once you reach the edge bone, stop carving. You'll notice some white flecks of crystal on the ham. Though this might look like salt, it is in fact crystals of tyrosine, an amino acid that develops in the ham during the curing process. The presence of these crystals is a guarantee of a top quality ham produced through natural maturation. Take the time to really appreciate the sensation of the blade slicing through the flesh and be sure to keep the cutting surface of your ham flat. The process of carving the massa is now coming to an end. The whole length of the femur is now becoming visible. It is time to rotate your ham through 180 degrees and prepare to start slicing the babilla. Proceed as for the massa by using your kitchen knife to trim off the rind and fat before reverting to your ham knife or carving. The fat is concentrated around the edges and the meat itself is very lean. Carve in the same way as for the massa. The babilla has a more pronounced lobe. Lean as it is, this section still features an arrow-shaped vein of fat known as flecha de la punta. These slices truly melt in the mouth, setting off amazing explosions of flavor. Slice until the other side of the femur becomes visible. You've now finished carving the papilla. Rotate your ham through 90 degrees to expose the side with the white fat. As before, trim along the length to remove the fat. Begin slicing from top to bottom, as before, along the length of the ham as far as the punta. These slices are sweet and tender. Be sure not to cut too deep. The punta is carved in the same way, with the edge bone serving as a support. Carve down to the bone. These slices have a strong flavor, 
since all the juices of the ham have collected here during the maturing process. You've now finished carving your bellota bellota ham. You'll find meat still remaining on the bone. These are full of flavor and can be removed using your boning knife. Diced small, this can be enjoyed with aperitifs or as a delicious addition to scrambled eggs or salads. The factors making for a great tasting experience are exactly the same as for fine wines. Be careful with oxidization. Carve your ham slices at the very last minute. This is essential to enjoy the full pleasure of tasting Iberico ham. Temperature. Bellota Bellota Iberian ham should be served around 23-24 Celsius degrees. Just before serving, present the slices on a plate that has been warmed slightly. One idea is to serve your Bellota Bellota ham on our specially designed Volcano dish, which is to Bellota ham what the canner is to great wines. This retained heat of the fine bone china, created by Bellota Bellota and commissioned from Bernardo, is transmitted to the slices, rendering them translucent. This will bring out the flavor for full enjoyment of this famous taste emotion. To produce a single Bellota Bellota ham requires a minimum of one Hiberian pig of 170 kilos in weight, one to two hectares of oak trees and 800 kilos of acorns. 42 to 60 month curation will give five kilos of Bellota Bellota ham. When these conditions and these alone are met, Bellota Bellota is probably the finest ham in the world. Bellota Iberico ham has a length of finish to rival any of the world's finest red wines. Cherry, beer, champagne. Champagne, king of wines, is a perfect foil for Iberico ham, especially a champagne with fine bubbles and a heady character. Cru Grande Cuvée leads the field. The extraordinary elegance of this champagne, a blend averaging over 150 different wines, harmonizes perfectly with the complex and lasting aromas of Bellota Bellota ham.